Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some free video editing software. Now this editing software is unique in the fact that this is DJI's officially recommended software. If you go to the DJI website under downloads, you can see they have it listed there. And they even have a page that goes over all the details and features of this app and why it's a good choice to use with DJI products. The main reason is, is that you can actually connect to your DJI devices. As you can see here, I already have a few devices listed that I've already been connected to. And as you can see here at the bottom, it's still continuing to search for new devices that I power on. And the premise behind this is that what this does is allows you to connect to the drone. It'll scan the memory card and allow you to preview all your footage in real time. From there, you can then edit it. Basically, you're editing off the drone. You don't have to copy all the files over, wasting space on your device. And we will take a closer look at that here coming up in a minute. Now software like this might be of interest to people who are just getting into drone flying. They want some simple software that works well, that's flexible, it's easy to use, but more importantly free. If you're just a hobbyist, you don't want to invest a lot of money into video editing software. And more importantly, a lot of people don't want to invest the time to learn something complex like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut, especially if you're just editing little clips to share on social media. Perhaps you're trying to grow a YouTube Shorts channel, Instagram Reel channel, or even TikTok. Something like this is a great choice for those scenarios. Now I am going to do a screen recording just so hopefully you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Uh, basically, this is the app interface when you launch it. It's very simple and it gives us a couple options down here at the bottom. You can see we have create and we have templates. For the most part in this video, I'm going to stick to the create section. Templates are basically just what it sounds like. They are template driven. You can select a theme you like, select some clips, and it's going to auto generate a video for you. Now you can do this auto generating in the create tab as well. I like it better just because it's a little bit more flexible. Now from this main interface, you can see we have three options. We have one tap edit, we have inspire cam, and we have new project. If we were to select new project, that's basically like traditional timeline editing. It's fully manual. You can go in, add clips, cut them, color grade them a little bit, add music, everything in there you're basically doing manual. And we will take a look at that here in a second. Above that, we have inspire cam. And basically that is storyboard editing. We've seen this before in other apps. Basically it gives you a storyboard, tells you how long to shoot for, what style of shots to get, and then it will put it together in a little edit for you. The one that a lot of people will be interested in is this one tap editing. This is the quick and simplest way to use the app. It's fully AI, so when you select your clips, it's gonna try and find the best moments. It's gonna determine whether it's ground shots, aerial shots, whether you're cycling at a party, there's people, beach. It'll then choose an appropriate template with the appropriate music, something that fits with the kind of content you're adding. But of course, it's fully customizable and we can change things as we go. So let's go in there, and what we're gonna do is start selecting some clips here. Now the reason why I like using the one tap edit it over the other template feature is that we can go into each individual clip and select some highlight spots. That way the software knows where the really good spots are, things that we want to use. Although the AI is pretty good, it doesn't always get it right. And if we have a three minute video, there might be two or three different spots in there that are really good that we want to use in the edit. By adding highlights, you know that the software is going to make use of those spots. So let's go ahead here and uh, we're going to add our first video. We've selected it, it's labeled number one, and you can see it's added it to the bottom there. But if we go back to that video, you can see we have this little expanding arrow. So we can click on that and we can play the video here. And what we can do is we can add some different highlight spots. You can see maybe we like that spot there. We can fast forward it. You can see here's another section with the train moving sideways. We can add another spot. So we've added two sections that we know we like that we want to include in the edit. We can also then select that spot and we can make it a little bit longer by dragging those handles, or we can shorten it up or change the position altogether. At the bottom here, it's telling us that we have two highlights selected. If we don't like one of them, say we added one accidentally, we can just click that X and that's gonna delete it. So then we can go back to the main page and we can go to the next video. And again, we can go in and select our highlight spots. We can fast forward it again and select another there. So we would just repeat that for all the different shots. Now I'm just using clips that I have stored on my phone right now, but this would work pretty well the same way if you have it connected directly to the drone. And again, like I said, we will take a look at that here coming up in a minute. Now at this point, just go through, collect everything that you wanna add. We hit next. And at this point, it's gonna analyze the files. So what it did there, it analyzed all the footage, tried to find anything that was interesting. It also made use of the highlights that we added. It added cuts and transitions in the appropriate spots to go with the music. 
So everything was done automatically with AI. So we can give it a quick preview to see what it came up with. So as you can see there, it did not too bad of a job. Now I do highly recommend if you're gonna use this auto editing feature to go in and add a few highlights and spots that you know look good because sometimes the AI doesn't always get it right. Now at this point, if you don't like the theme it's chosen, we can go in and manually change that. As you can see at the top here, we have all different themes. You can select aerial, nature, cheerful, and every time you select one, it's gonna change the theme, change the music. You can go in and preview and decide which you like best. Once you've picked a theme that you like that you're happy with, we can go in and adjust things a little bit to customize it to our own taste. Uh, the first thing we can do is add filters. Now when we go into filters, you can see that we do have three different options. We have filter, adjust, and aqua. Filter basically just adds some pre-made filters, trying to mimic different looks. Adjust basically allows us to go in and do our own grading. You can see it lists all the clips. We can go in and adjust the saturation, contrast, brightness. We can apply it just to that specific clip or we can apply it to all of them. So if we make an adjustment to say to the contrast and we hit apply all, every clip is going to have that same change. It's kind of limited to the kind of grading you can do, but you know, for the most part, for simple edits, it's enough to get the job done. Now at the very right hand side here, we have Aqua. So that's basically filters to help you get the best footage for content that was shot underwater. Say you film some underwater footage with your Osmo Action, you can go in and apply some filters to help make it look a little bit better. We can also add text and stickers. So we can do that in that section. But we do have an edit section here. What this allows us to do is go in and make some changes to some of the cuts and different things that the AI has done. For example, if we take a look at this first clip here, we have the first clip highlighted. We can go to extract. And you can see here we have the whole video clip and that's the section that it's using. We can actually drag it along. So say we want it to start there instead. Maybe we found it was starting a little too early from a spot that we liked. We could just adjust it and then hit the check mark to confirm. At the same time, we can also adjust the speed. So if we want to speed the footage up or slow it down, we can do that in that same area. Or we can completely replace the clip. Say we don't like that clip, we want something different. We just select replace and then select an appropriate clip. If you go back, we can also crop the video. So say we want to squeeze in a little bit, kind of give it a zoomed look, we can do that. And we can also rotate it if that's what we need to do. We can set the volume of the clips. We can delete clips. We can change the sort order. So if we like some of these clips, but we just want to move it, we can easily adjust things. So it's very easy to customize it and get things looking the way you want. Now, when you're done and you're happy and you're ready to export your video, at the top here, we have our export tools. First of all, you can see we can select our resolution. We can export it as a 720, 1080, or 4K video file. We can set our frame rate from 30 all the way up to 60, and it gives us an approximate size of the video file. We can also change our aspect ratio. All these clips were filmed in a landscape format. You might be editing shots from the Mini 3 and Portrait, so you may need to change the aspect ratio, especially if you're gonna be uploading to YouTube Shorts or something like TikTok. You can see there I've changed it to a nine by 16, and it's adjusted everything accordingly. When you're ready, you just hit export, and it's gonna save it to your photo library. So that was using the one tap edit, basically using AI to help you along. Now, if you want to do everything manually, you want to do your own cutting and clipping, you want to do a little bit of speed ramping even, there are some tools built in there to allow you to do that. For that aspect, what we're going to do is select new project. And here again, we can select any clips we want to bring in. I'm just going to start by bringing in one clip. And as you can see, we basically have just a regular timeline. We can stretch in, we can shrink it down. 
And just like any traditional editor, we can go in and split our clips, as you can see there. We can then delete sections. And if we click in between the clips, we can actually set different transitions. You see they have a nice glitch one there if you like that. And it will give you a bit of a preview of what it's going to look like. They have some roll transitions. You can set the length of the transition, how long it takes. And then if we're back in the main editing tab here, we can also reverse a clip if you want to reverse it. Now at any time, we can add a new clip by hitting that plus sign at the side there. We can hit add. That's going to add that full video clip again that we can go in and edit. Now I'm going to delete that because the other thing we can do here is click that plus sign again to add a clip. But this time, let's use those arrow markers like we did earlier. And we can actually select certain clips just like we did before. We can select the length. We can add as many as we want. And then when we go back now, hit add. You can see it's now added all those little highlight markers that we added. Everything is already cut for us. We can zoom in just to make it a little bit easier to see. We can add transitions and do any editing and adjusting that we need. Now, one thing I do want to show you here that's really interesting is if we select one of the clips, we can go over to the speed tool and this is where we can speed up the footage, slow it down if we want some slow motion. But we also have a curve tool which kind of mimics speed ramping if you want to get some speed ramping effects. You can see we've got our linear line here. So if we want the video to play in real time at the start, but then we want it to ramp up and do a faster speed, you can see we can do that. We can then we can slow it down, you know, so we can do all different things. The closer you have these markers together, the quicker the transition from slow to fast will be. And on top of that, they actually have some custom ones that they've pre-built different effects. So if we click on that, you can see it gives us some options. We have montage, hero movement, bullet time. You know, so it kind of gives you some different interesting effects. So that's something you can play around with and see what you like. Now back at the main editing page, if we look at the bottom here, there's all other things we can do. Again, we can add some titling. We can go in and adjust, do some color grading, and we can add music. If we click here to add music, so you can see here we've got all different types of music that we can uh, use. We can go in and preview it, see what we like. And one interesting thing that they've done here is they have this thing called rhythm. And what we can do is we can play the music. And we can add different uh, rhythm marks. And the reason why you would do that, as you can see here, at the bottom it's added these little dots. That makes it easier when we're going to do our editing, we know where we want our cuts. Now before I go here, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on how you can connect directly to something like your drone. Now according to the DJI website, this is compatible with the Mavic 3 series, the Mini 3 series, the Action 3, the Action 2, the Pocket 2, and of course most of the Osmo Mobile products. Now of course you can edit from any other device, something like the Mini 2 or any other camera. You just won't be able to connect directly to the device like I'm showing you here. You would have to transfer the footage over to your phone first. Now like a lot of DJI products with iOS, there's a little bit of a bug that you do have to turn off cellular connection. We've seen that with some of the Osmo products and using quick transfer sometimes you have to disable that. So you just want to go in and make sure that you have cellular turned off. Then what we do is click on device. You can see right away it's now asking me to connect to the Mini 3. Now I've already been connected to it in the past so it should just connect automatically. The first time you connect a device it's going to ask you to press the power button just to confirm the connection. But I will go ahead and hit connect. It's going to ask us to join the network. So as you can see here, it's now listing all the content that's on the memory card. Basically, this is reading the memory card of the Mini 3 Pro. And like I demonstrated before, we can go in and select whatever clips we want. We can go in and add highlight markers. We'll click Next. And again, it's going to analyze the footage just like before. But the difference here is that it's just reading it off the memory card. It's not actually copying those high-res files over. Now that's important because we know a lot of times these smartphones have limited storage, so we don't want to waste space by bringing all these large files over. And just like before, what it's done, it's made a little auto edit. Again, we can go in and adjust the template, or we can go in and do some manual adjustments ourselves. When we're ready, we can now export, 
And like I said, the really interesting thing here is we're just going to have one 4K file when we're done. We did not need to copy anything over from the drone. Basically, we're using the drone like a mobile hard drive. It's going to be editing right off the drone. If we go to our camera album now, oh, there's our dog. If we go to our camera album now, there's the video file that I just exported. Now, that wasn't anything spectacular because I just did that quickly. So you can see the value in that. If you're on vacation and you just want to make a couple quick edits, you don't have to transfer any content over. You can just connect directly to your device, whether it be the Action 3, the Action 2, your Mavic 3, the Mini 3, and you've got a nice 4K video file without having to waste a lot of space on your phone. Well, folks, that's basically it. Just a quick look at Light Cut, something that some of you may be interested in. Now, one thing I do want to mention here before I go, that if you want to edit on an iPad, you can download this Light Cut for an iPad, but it's going to run in that kind of emulated mode for a phone. There's no native iPad app yet. That may change in the future, but right now it's really designed for smartphones. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.